Hey, what's up everybody? It's Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome back to MX vs. ATV Reflex where today we're going to do another custom track review. Uh, this is 1998 Tempe Supercross by NWG. Uh, I, if you guys remember, I did a tr uh, track review, whatever you want to call it, track gameplay video on the 1992 Tampa Supercross, I think it was. Uh, month and a half, two months ago or so. And I talked a little bit in that video about how NWG has been working on like a retro Supercross series. You created 17 rounds of these old tracks uh, throughout the years. And it's not just any specific one year or one uh, type of track that he selected. It seems like he went for a lot of these like uh, tracks that created really, really good races. And this one created a very good race. In fact, this race was one of my favorite races to watch growing up as a kid, uh, going back and watching it on VHS. To give myself a little bit of history about this, um, I was born in 1993. I didn't really start like religiously watching every Supercross until I was like four years old. So 97 was like my first season watching uh, pretty much every round. And so by 98, I was like fully invested in Supercross, I feel like, and motocross and everything like that. Uh, so I finally went to my first Supercross in 1998 when I was five or just about to turn five, I should say. And um, it was round one of the championship at that point, which was LA, but then the very next week was this round uh, in Tempe. And this race was, in my opinion, like one of those races that if it had been like McGrath versus Emick or, or McGrath versus Carmichael or, you know, Stu versus Reed or whatever, that we would talk about it like endlessly because that's how good of a race it ended up being. But it was McGrath versus Ezra Lusk. And Ezra Lusk was a terrific terrific rider uh i think it was a 125 east champion in 94 and then during mcgrath's like late heydays after emig had won a title but then mcgrath came back to yamaha and started dominating again uh lusk was one of the few guys that really could take it to mcgrath on any given night uh usually he would end up either hurt or too inconsistent to end up battling for the championship uh but speed wise he was one of those guys that you just it seemed like any night he could go win the race um and this one was no exception to that now this race started out just uh to kind of give a quick synopsis of the race started out with uh i think mike craig got the whole shot but mcgrath was fairly quickly into the lead i think it was like two or three laps in he was into the race lead and if you don't remember the jeremy mcgrath days at all the jeremy mcgrath days consisted of jeremy mcgrath either hole shotting or like getting into the lead within the first couple of laps and charging for 10 laps, like blistering pace, fastest lap over and over and over again, getting like a 10 to 15 second lead going and then managing the race. Like he was perfect at doing that because he would be the guy that gets the starts when everybody else wouldn't. And he was the best rider on the track. There's no question about it. But, you know, uh, if someone started with him, they definitely could make a little bit more of a race out of it than, than uh, you know, it seemed like. But McGrath was very good at getting out front, pulling away, and then managing the race from the front. So this looked like another carbon copy version of that as, you know, he got into the lead pretty early, started to pull away a little bit, had a gap going. But at, I think, lap six or seven, and this is when main events used to be just 20 laps instead of 20 minutes, but like six or seven laps in, uh, Lusk finally moved into second place. And then he kind of just kept McGrath, you know, at a at a pretty steady distance. Like he was about three or four seconds behind McGrath much of the race after this. And what the real catalyst ended up being and why Lusk eventually caught McGrath was lap traffic. And I mean, you could spin it any way you want. I think without lap traffic, McGrath doesn't win this race. Like Lusk was going faster than him toward the late stages. But um, the second McGrath caught lappers, he had trouble getting by like two or three different guys. Um, and it eventually led to Lusk catching him. And then there's a pretty like famous picture, as you can see on the screen right there, of Lusk going down the inside of Jeremy McGrath uh, with two laps, I think it was, to go and making a pretty, you know, aggressive block pass. Like it wasn't like a, a T-bone or anything like that, but he stuffed him pretty good. And then McGrath came back two corners later, stuffed Lusk back, and they went back and forth for pretty much the better half of the last, you know, two or three laps of the race. And it was a great battle. Um, you know, mostly respectful, but also uh, aggressive, kind of, you know, what you expect out of 90s Supercross. Like, the, the block passes weren't, like, non-contact. Pretty much every block pass had some contact to it, but it was a good race. It went back and forth. Lusk finally got the lead, like, fully stolen back from McGrath onto the last lap of the race. It went bar-to-bar -bar through uh, this upcoming rhythm section here, and then Lusk kind of stuffed him 
uh, before the whoops and, and got a little bit of a gap going and just enough pretty much to go to the inside in the final turn and, and hold off uh, for the race victory. Now that I think about it, it might actually have been round three because I think Lusk won the second round of that year, which was something else. I can't remember, but uh, it was a it was a great race. Like it was one of those races that it went down to the very end, which I think most people, you know, prefer to have a race go down to the very end. Like races that start off are very entertaining at the beginning, but slowly trickle down and someone pulls out a big lead. Um, they're fun to watch, but they're also kind of like, man, I, you know, I wish that we would have had a battle all the way to the flag. So this is what that one was. Like it, it definitely materialized late. It was a little bit boring in the mid part when it looked like McGrath was going to manage it from the front, but Lusk made a race out of that and, uh, eventually was able to take the win. And it was just a fun race to watch for sure. So, um, cool of NWG by, you know, I think realizing that that race deserves a little bit more like credit than it ends up getting uh for how good of a race it ended up being and, and and building this track too which i think gives us a pretty cool glimpse into what supercross looked like uh during the mcgrath heydays because this is you know in the beginning of him going towards his fifth supercross title so uh not the very beginning of a supercross championships but not the very end of it either and i feel like by the end uh supercross was getting a fair bit more technical and then in the 2000s the tracks that was built in 2000 i think are still some of the most technical gnarly supercross tracks of all time but mcgrath also uh you know kind of in the early 90s came from the day when tracks were pretty non-technical like they, they were technical in regard that they tried to make stuff that really uh you know slowed momentum down they weren't very rhythmic uh they had like moguls and weird bumps and wall jumps in the middle of a rhythm section and different things like that but uh, this is a good mix of both of those because I feel like you see here they made like a pretty cool rhythm section where they tire tap in and they double up to this triple down uh, to this little uh, gap right here double it in the corner but then you come out of it and the very next corner is like a wall jump table which I can't remember the last time I saw a jump that looks like that in Supercross so uh, you know like kind of like a weird mix of old and new school combined together and on top of that the track at Tempe uh, which is in Arizona. This is, you know, basically the Phoenix quote unquote supercross of the generation. It's an outdoor stadium. So the dirt was just sitting cooking, you know, all day long. And, and it, it gets cooler in Arizona during the winter, but not cold, I would say. And, uh, you know, it still was probably pretty sunny all day long, baking the track out. Plus the dirt they pulled in from wherever they pulled it was probably already some pretty baked dirt anyway, living in the Arizona sun. And so the, the track and the soil and everything like that was very hard packed in blue groove by the end of the main event. Like if you go watch this race, you'll be shocked to see what the whoops look like from back then. They're basically just concrete. Um, but you know, that's, that was super cross back then. That was what I feel like differentiated riders is that people have really had to be good in all conditions. So uh, I was always a big fan of this race, big fan of this track. Like, I wish we saw a little bit more tracks kind of like this nowadays every once in a while to challenge guys. Uh, maybe not the gnarly blue grooveness or whatever, but make some whoops that aren't your standard, you know, whatever distance apart and whatever distance tall. You know, give them a little bit of undulations. Give, give them a weird, uh, you know, tabletop section to think about. You know, this is a little bit boring back here, but, you know, it, it created a good race. And I think that sometimes... Uh, as NWG has kind of done with his little series that he's made in Reflex here, it sometimes is a good thing to go back and look at the tracks that made good races because we can sometimes recreate those tracks nowadays and try to make those same races as good as they were back then uh, with the modern riders. Uh, you know, they, they recreated the 2001 Anaheim Supercross in 2013, I believe it was, that this happened. And it created one of the best races that we've had in recent times, which is uh, Chad Reed coming from fifth to first to win the race. And he had to pass James Stewart. He had to pass Ken Roxon. Villapoto caught Stewart and, and crashed into him. And they went down and like, I, you know, and that's just them building an old track. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that I wish Supercross would entertain a little bit more. Go back and, and try to find these hidden gems of tracks uh, that did produce good racing. And I'm not saying that this one would uh, create great racing either because, like I said, one of the few reasons that it did create a good race was lap traffic. But it still is a cool track to look back, reflect on, uh, see how it was raced, and, and maybe theorize how... Uh, how the modern riders would attack it differently. Where would they triple something that wasn't being tripled or, or, or what have you? So um, anyway, yeah, this is 1998 Tempe Supercross by NWG. 
And if you guys want to check this one out, please be sure to head down to the description below. I'll include a track link. Uh, it is available on the PC only. I get a lot of questions about that as well. People asking uh, if you can get this track on console, but no, you cannot. It's PC only. Um, so yeah, definitely go check it out. Would recommend trying it out for the very at the very least. What I would recommend is checking out NWG's tracks. Um, to basically just see what Supercross looked like and, and what modern bikes kind of to a degree uh, can do on them. So um, it's been a lot of fun to play his old tracks, check it out and, and you know, try them on a four stroke and, and all that stuff. So yeah, definitely would recommend uh, taking a look and appreciate you guys stopping by and watch another video here on the channel. I'm signing off for now and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.